Have you ever wanted to solve a mystery or at least be a part of one? Do you ever stay up watching conspiracy documentaries and wondering what is happening all around you? Ever feel like you need to be a part of something? Do something? Maybe you find a glimpse of something that seems different, something that seems off, and you decide to investigate. And even when you find yourself at a dead end, you keep trying to go deeper and learn more. Why do we need to feel special or feel like we can solve something? If we have to do something with our lives, maybe we can solve a world mystery or make something of ourselves. In film, these characters are mostly seen in paranoid conspiracy thrillers. I want to investigate three characters and see if we can discover the reason why they might take things they shouldn't be doing too far. Characters in a conspiracy thriller are usually journalists or amateur investigators who find themselves pulling on a small thread that unravels into a conspiracy that is either way over the top or becomes nothing at all. But the first character we will be talking about isn't a journalist or an investigator. He's a sound engineer. Blowout, directed by Brian De Palma, came out in 1981, starring John Travolta as he tried to solve a crime after he witnesses and saves a girl from a car crash. Jack Terry, a sound engineer for movies, was recording some field sounds when he heard two different explosive pops as he watched a car crash into a river. He heroically dives into the water and saves the girl. As he becomes closer to the girl, he discovers there is a hidden mystery to all that has happened. Not only did he discover the car was targeted at, he also discovered many lies and false accusations. Now, why does Jack care so much about discovering the truth? Maybe it's because he fell for the girl he saved Sally. Maybe it's because he was bored and wanted to distract himself with something. Or maybe something from his past keeps him up at night and he hopes to do better and sees this as an opportunity. Later in the film, we discover that Jack used to be a sound engineer for undercover investigators. So anytime someone had to do a secret meetup, Jack could set up a wire on the guy and hear everything. Except one time when he accidentally got someone killed. Jack ended up losing his job after this incident, now has to do sound work for movies. We realize as the movie goes on that Jack's motive was to make himself feel better. He wanted to solve this mystery because he thought he could make up for what he did in the past. In the end, Jack does solve the mystery and once again has to save the girl. He does everything he can to save the girl. He runs and runs and even gets in a car crash, but he still keeps going. But even in the end, when he thinks he saved the girl, he is too late. The whole film, Jack is trying to find the perfect scream for his movie. And since Sally had a wire on her when Jack was trying to save her, he had the recording of her scream and used it in the film. Jack doesn't save the girl, but he got his perfect scream. Maybe he used her scream to keep her alive somehow. Or maybe it's a constant reminder for him that he isn't a hero and shouldn't try to be. The next character I want to investigate believes he was a hero, or at least tried to portray that he was one. Travis Binkle from Taxi Driver is played by Robert De Niro as a taxi driver who is socially awkward and wants to clean up the filth of New York City. Travis is a very complex character and has many motives. His first one was that he wanted to go out with a girl, Betsy. After making Betsy uncomfortable multiple times, Travis begins to resent her and decides he is going to assassinate Palantine, the politician Betsy is working for. Maybe taking him down would show Betsy he is powerful and she should have taken Travis more seriously. While this is all happening, Travis meets Iris, a young girl who is a prostitute in New York City. Travis becomes very protective of Iris and wants Iris to leave this life and go back to her family. The men who are around Iris are scum, said Travis, and we have to clean up the city. Now why is Travis doing all of this? Why does he need to get Bexie's attention by attempting to kill Palantine? And why does he need to take care of Iris, a young girl he only just met? He says towards the beginning of the film that he wants to do something. 
He wants to go out and really do something. Travis' motive is to feel important, no matter how morally right he does it. Travis knows nothing about what is happening in the world. In the film, he is constantly saying nothing. He doesn't know anything about politics or worldviews that the other characters do know about and talk about. He is very isolated and lonely. He doesn't even really speak to the other taxi drivers he works with. He only has one life purpose, and it's to kill Palatine and save Iris. After preparing himself for days on how he's going to kill Palatine, he still ends up failing. He gets spotted before he can even pull the gun and flees the scene. After he does this, he feels like a failure, so he has to save someone, or do something. Iris, the only other motive he has. He began to kill all the men around Iris, even then tried to kill himself, but he was out of bullets and passed out. The ending of this film is up for interpretation. It appears he wakes up and suddenly is a hero. He saved Iris, her parents are thrilled, the guys at work love him, and Betsy even gives him a second chance. Personally, I think this is all in his imagination when he's dying. Everything he did, everything he went through, had to be worth it. It's like Jack from Blowout. Even though he could not save the girl, he had to make it all worthwhile. So he used her scream. Travis needed to feel like a hero. So even though he couldn't kill Palantine, killing other scum would make up for it. All of these characters so far have had a love interest that started off the whole investigation. Even if they did have different motives towards the end, getting the girl was always part of their plan. Our final character I'm going to talk about goes by the name Sam from Under the Silver Lake. Under the Silver Lake came out in 2018 and is once again about a boy who sees a girl and suddenly she disappears. Sam, played by Andrew Garfield, had to find her. He had to know what happened. Sarah, the girl Sam is looking for, was the only person to ever give him attention. He is very similar to our other characters. He is similar to Travis by being socially awkward and similar to Jack because he wants to solve something, be important. As Sam keeps investigating the mystery of Sarah, he soon realizes that this is way over his head. It begins to not even make sense, but Sam keeps going. Sam has always been thinking his whole life is one big conspiracy. And even when there is not a secret at all, he believes there is one. In the end, Sam does find the truth of what happened to Sarah. She faked her death and joined almost like a cult underground in tombs where they will spend the rest of their life in peace until they die. Sam says goodbye to Sarah, but then is left alone and ends up going back to his house and eating Sarah's favorite meal. Even when the mystery of Sarah is over, Sam is still looking for answers and tries to figure out what the parrot from across the street is saying. The movie ends and the audience and Sam do not know what the parrot means, and Sam is never allowed to talk to anyone about what happened. He just has to live on knowing all that he learned. And even after that, he is still investigating. I think Sam feels lost without a mystery. He has to always be looking for something and will continue to always look even if there is nothing there. Some things are better left unknown, but the curiosity inside most of us beats whatever common sense we have to stay away from something. Jack, Travis, and Sam, all with different stories, still all have one thing in common, the need of not feeling powerless. Jack went through his story to gain his power back. Travis went through his to feel power, and Sam wanted to know what it was like to have power, knowledge. We could relate to these characters because of our own world is also driven by power. Who has the most knowledge and power is usually on top, so maybe this is why we find ourselves watching conspiracies or looking for an answer, because if we did find something, it might make us all feel powerful.